OpScan is an extremely powerful tool and service that enables you to query and scan a vast database of options information, volatility information, and information on the underlying assets. It's the only service we know about that allows you to customize your own proprietary formulas to query the vast database of options out there. So to get to OpScan, you go to the top next to Survey, click the OpScan button, and this brings up a screen where we give you roughly a dozen formulas for you to explore this service. Now I'm going to do a few others myself that I find very helpful. I'm going to show you some custom scans that I've created. But what you do is you click on any of these and you can click the Modify button and that will bring up the formula screen itself. Now these various parameters all stand for different types of information of course. And to access that information it's best that you go to the Help feature Go to Option View 7, and in the Help area, click on User's Guide, go to OpScan, scroll down, and come to the uh, uh, OpScan Operators and Parameters. This will give you some very important screens. The Formula Operators, you can, uh, what I'd suggest you do is just copy and paste this into a doc document and print it out. The underlying specific parameters related to the underlying asset itself, and then the option specific parameters. If any formula has an option specific parameter, you will get a report with just options in that report. If your formula only has underlying specific parameters, then you will get a list of stocks, futures, or index markets. Okay, so once again, use the underlying specific parameters. But if you use even one option specific parameter here, you will then get a list of options in the report. So let's go and let me show you some other formulas that I've created besides the 12 that we give you. And I switched programs here. We'll bring up the OpScan area. And here you can see I have created uh, hundreds of formulas over the years in working at Option View here. Let me deselect all these. Let me show you one that I created called Tightest Markets. Let's see here, where is it? Tightest Markets, there we go. Click on Modify, let's take a look at this. And well, if I wanted to start from scratch, I could click New and just type in the title, the pick, the sort, and the show line. But I've already done this, so let me go down to Tightest Markets again, like I just showed you here, Tightest Markets. There's the title, ATM3 means at the money within 3% or less. That means that, that um, uh, uh, I want to pick the 250 options out there. Okay, well first the population. I want to examine all the options that lie within 3% of being at the money. I want to look at all the options that have an asking price greater than a penny and a bid greater than a penny. Now watch this. I want, all of all these thousands of options, I'm going to sort this population based upon this ratio, asking price minus, or divided by the difference between ask and bid. See where I'm going with this? Okay. I want those options that have a very large asking price, but a very small spread between bid and ask. That way I know that the market is very tight and I can probably get a really good fill. All right, in the, in the report itself, I want it to report to me the ask, the bid, and then the price of the actual uh, underlying stock or index itself. I'm gonna have, uh, I'm gonna examine all of them. 250 is the max that I can recover. I'm gonna hit okay. Then I'm gonna go ahead and hit go. It's gonna go out and query all those markets and one, uh, one disadvantage I have right now is that I am doing this uh, after hours. And you really want to run this tightest market report you know, during the trading day. You can see I've obviously run several reports. And so I'm not satisfied with the results here. 
simply because I know I'm running it after the market and some of these ask and bids are not going to be accurate because it's not during a live session. So let me find a tightest markets where I ran it. Um, here's one. I think I ran it during the day. Did I run that during the day? Uh, yeah, I did. Well, no. Let me see. I'm just not happy with that one. Let me go up and... Uh, here we go. Ran that during the day on the 9th of July. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all 250 of these. You can see here, look at this. On this spider, 164 put. Asking price was 396. The bid was 395. That's a penny wide spread on almost a $4 option. I hope you'd agree that that's a pretty good tight market right there. Look at the uh, spiders have several here located. What I'm going to do is grab all 250 of these. I'm going to highlight them all. I'm going to send them to my OpScan results area of my quotes display. And I'm just going to show you how I whittle these down to get a nice little set of 12 to 15 assets that I know have a tight spread between bid and ask. So here I am. Let me come up here. It'll say OpScan results. Right. Where is it? Right there. It sent all 250 items here. I'm going to right click on this area above symbol and I'm going to alphabetize all of those items in that group. So, or alphabetize by symbol. Then I'm going to show you what I do here. Okay, so the Euro index had four. Okay, Swiss franc only had one item out of 250. That was probably a customer order that contributed to that. Apple had several. So I'm going to scroll through here and get rid of all of those that just appear once or twice. Okay. Here your city group has several. So watch this. I'm going to come in for a landing here. Diamonds have several. eBay has enough. Okay. Getting rid of these. Facebook has three. Eh, that's not enough. I want a little bit more. FXI has several. GDX. GLD only has a couple here. GM only has three. HAL has three. IBM. IWM has several. Look at that. That has a good set of uh, tight markets in there. Coke. Let's get rid of those. So I'm going to get rid of those that only appear once or twice out of 250. You know, not enough. Q's have several. Starbucks only. Oops. Starbucks only one. SP. Now watch this. The spider has a ton. So this is just one way to use the uh, op scan. All these just have a couple. No big deal. XLE has several. XLI. YYY. Get rid of those. We'll leave Exxon and eh, Yahoo will leave in there too. Okay. So there we go. Now after I get rid of those that appear just a few times, I'm going to hit the A button and alphabetize those and get rid of the duplicates. And then I am left with, as you can see, a real tight group. How many are in here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, about 15, 16 or so that have tight markets. And so that's one way to use OpScan to find assets with real tight markets. And that would be a nice little group to trade if you're concerned about that. I'm going to label this tightest markets. See that? All right, so that's one way to use OpScan. Let me show you something else I use, and that is looking for non-directional candidates. Many of you like to trade uh, in, a, in a way where you don't really care about whether the market goes up or down. You're, you're perhaps delta neutral type trader. So I get calls every now and then wanting to look for uh, uh, a non-directional candidate. So let me show you what I've created here. Lens non-directional candidates right there. So let me highlight this, modify. Let me show you what we're looking for. We're looking for items where over the last 500 days, on average, implied volatility is greater than statistical volatility by roughly 5% of that number. Okay, by roughly 5%. Okay, not five percentage points, 20 to 25, okay? But I want implied to be higher than statistical on average over the last two years. Next, I want statistical to be 
uh, underneath its 20-day average. And again, you can see that in that parameters grid I showed you in the help feature. Then I want the underlying asset to be worth at least $20. $20. I'm going to take this population. I'm going to sort it by the liquidity level, the uh, dollar volume over the last 10 days, the average total dollar volume over the last 10 days. Then in the report, I want to see the price of the underlying asset. I want to see the implied volatility average over the last 500 days, roughly two years, statistical. And then I want to make sure statistical is well underneath its 20-day average. I'm going to query everything out there. I want 40 items in the report. Let me click OK here. And then I'm going to hit, let me see, let me uh, click uh, deselect and make sure that's the only thing I'm querying. There we go. Let's go ahead and go out and get that report and bring it in. Here we go. Let's see what we got. So these are non-directional candidates. The SP futures, you can see, have implied on average higher than statistical. We call that being chronically overvalued. Statistical is underneath its 20-day average. And you'll find that setup, that volatility profile, is the same for all of these here. So if you are a non-directional trader, perhaps you like to trade condors, butterflies, calendars, you know, at-the-money calendars, butterflies, this would be a good list to look at given the volatility profile I just described. So those are just two ways to use OpScan. Again, we have many professionals using OpScan daily, several, sometimes several times during the day. It is just an extremely powerful tool to help you query the world of options, finding that needle in a haystack, finding that good candidate list to help you trade successfully.